good morning guys welcome back to my channel i pray that you're all in the best of health and man let me close the window because it is loud how are you guys doing hope you guys are doing well so i have a lot going on this summer guys we have eid we have a friend of mine is getting married as well so i'm gonna kind of do like a um little get together with just myself and a couple of other ladies um just to kind of ce celebrate our last time with her before she gets married she'll be getting married in august inshallah so excited for her um so i have that to plan and maybe inshallah i'll share some of that with you guys but today it's taking me this long to sort out my summer wardrobe because i still had a lot of my winter stuff in my wardrobe and i was just like I need to put that aside so I can completely focus on the summer stuff because we have been having a heat wave here in the UK and it has just been so hot and I'm just like I need to sort out my wardrobe so that I don't find it as hard picking out things to wear because whenever I want to go out I'm just like so what do I wear because <laughs> I'm so hot um what I actually need to invest in are like some nicer jill barbs that are not black <laughs> I know um, I have my favourite Jill Barb, which is the black one that you guys always ask me where I got that from, the one with the zip. I bought it so many years ago from a sister who used to sell a ne um near me, but she doesn't have a store there anymore. And I'm finding it really hard to find Jill Barbs with zips, but those are my favourite type of Jill Barbs because the ones without the zips, I just feel like <sighs> they feel constricting. So I like having the versatility of the zip. Um, but anyways, I had picked up a couple of things from H&M just to kind of add to my summer wardrobe. So I'll share the, some of that with you. But yeah, I'm going to stop chit-chatting and I'm going to go and start sorting out my wardrobe. Um, after that, I'm going to go to the shops, do a few bits and pieces. So I'll share with you guys as I go along, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, my lord, I wanna be a better man Show me the way I don't wanna settle for less But my flesh put me backwards Every time I make some effort It's the same, yeah, yeah, Robbie, I know When I'm coming from from me, I feel it, I know And I don't wanna get lost in the knee, I know I'm calling cause I believe you love me Yeah, yeah, getting better I'm not doing this cause I want a better all right, guys, so there is some kind of method to this madness that you see here. Let me zoom out a little bit. So what I have going on is I have a lot of my winter wear down there, which I will be putting away. But then at the same time, I also have some items that I want. I do want to keep like this abeya, for example, I also wear in the summertime and just some bits and pieces. So few of these things will be going back in the wardrobe and the majority of them will be going away because they are the winter clothes and then minus this top i have my hijabs which i have arranged into kind of like my more wintry colors versus my more summery lighter chiffon hijabs so that just makes it easier for me to pick um even though ideally i should put this whole bunch away I do still sometimes I mean black is a classic everyone wears black all of the time so I will still be keeping both sets in my uh, wardrobe but what for the most part these are the hijabs I'll be wearing this summer so that's staying there are a couple of tops over here that I also want to keep um, they are my summer type tops and things like that and also this is also another summer pile I will share with you guys some um, outfit ideas of what I like to wear during the summer in a second. Over here, since tomorrow is Eid, I have chosen this abeya to wear for Eid. I will show you a better look of it in a moment. And over there is just a small little pile for items that I want to um, give away because those clothes are too small for me. So yeah, and then over here I have my African attires that need to go back into its right um, drawer. They should not be on the hanger as you guys probably saw in my wardrobe there are no african wares because all of my african wares have their own separate drawers so yeah that's that and i have my raincoat down there because this is england you always need a form of a coat irregardless of the time of the year that it is so that's just one of my raincoats i have the other one that i'm currently using which is kind of like a, a creamish nude color now that everything's nice and full i'm going to share with you guys some of the pieces that I like um, to have in my wardrobe for my summer wear. First and foremost, this is something that I've just recently done within the last like 
year is to just lighten up my colors a little bit before i would stick to my blacks and i would be roasting and now i'm just like why are you doing it to yourself so that's the first thing color wise because black actually absorbs heat and so it keeps you much more warmer much more hotter so if you can go for lighter colors do second thing that i would say is think about your fabrics very carefully you want to go for things like cotton um chiffon just lighter colors linen i know linen wrinkles a lot but i do have this dress from h&m that has some linen in it and it trust me it does keep you a lot cooler than if you were wearing a dress that is made out of plastic and yeah believe it or not a lot of our clothes are made out of plastic so if you can go for like more natural um f uh, fabrics that would be perfect and that would work well for you so because i found so if you can go so if you can go for more natural fabrics that would be perfect so lighter colors more natural fabric right so a couple of examples of the things that i like to wear is i like to have tops and skirts but i also like to have dresses and i also love to have open abayas those are the ones that i haven't invested in as much in terms of like lighter colored open abayas for summertime that's something that i want to invest more in towards the end of the summer season and into by next summer inshallah i should have quite a couple of open lighter bears that I love. The other day actually I feel like I swore in H&M because I found a dress that I feel like was perfectly made for a hijabi, well to some extent, and it was 100% cotton and I wore it out and I could legit feel the difference. Like I was so much more cooler in the dress and it's it's, it's a dress but I wear it as a top and I would normally wear it with a maxi, like a straight maxi skirt underneath and it's this dress right here it is so beautiful it has like these puffed up sleeves as you guys can see um and it just sits beautifully on the on like your neck area obviously all this part is exposed so you will need a hijab um, make sure your hijab covers all this area but apart from that it's just it's beautifully made and when i actually looked at it it was made in turkey and i was like that explains everything right as we know turkey is a muslim country so yeah that explains everything um it was the last one there at my local h&m and i have looked online before i started recording this video and it's not online but if you still want to have a look go ahead and have a look you might be able to find similar ones but aside from just how beautifully it is made it's 100 percent cotton and it's white so it just keeps me nice and cool and like i say i would wear something like this with a straight skirt underneath but because the top is so long it's literally kind of like a mini dress it doesn't matter the type of skirt that you wear underneath because normally because i know that i'm a curvy girl i don't like wearing skirts that are like cut like this you know straight up and down i usually go for a-line skirts that flare out so they don't like stick to your hips but with a dress like this because it's so this is already an a-line dress you can do one of those straight down skirts and it still looks good with your neutral colored hijab a nice neutral colored handbag and flats and girl you are rocking your summer you can even add a nice hat to this and you're good to go sometimes if i can't be bothered but i still want to look like nice and chic and put together i might still wear an abaya but i would put something like this on top of it so this was another piece that i picked also got from h&m but you can get loads of these from like zara and places like that so it's like a sleeveless um uh waistcoat can i call it a waistcoat and something like this can easily elevate your style very very quickly like you can be wearing the most plain abaya underneath but by the time you've added this on top of it you have your neutral colored hijab on top you have your neutral colored handbag you are looking like a million dollars <laughs> so i i really love pieces like this also i would say a regular blazer but if you can get a linen blazer i'm currently looking for a linen blazer so if you guys have any good recommendations that you want to recommend to me please let me know in the comment section down below but at the moment i have this blazer this is also from h&m it's a white blazer it's opened 
and I like the fact that it has this little ruffle detail on the arms part but again it's nice and simple with something like this I could be wearing any kind of top with something like this I can wear an abeya and put this on top but if I'm really hot and I can't be asked I can have a maxi skirt and then wear any sleeveless top like that I want for example a top like this and just put it underneath the blazer and instantly guys look at that instantly you look well put together you look like you made an effort and it's so easy so a blazer is definitely something that i would recommend especially here in the uk when we don't tend to have a lot of like heat waves most of our summers are like one minute it's hot the next minute it's cold it's kind of hot but not really <laughs> you know we have a lot of those days and so a blazer is just i feel it's a must for the summer season but again go for the lighter colors so now what i need to do is go over to the beauty supply store get myself my um hair detangler because if you guys have noticed that my head looks slightly big in this video it's because my hair is out so um i need the detangler to help me detangle my hair and probably might do like very small braids just so that my hair is nice and flat again so it doesn't end up looking twice as big like this in my eat pictures because we can't be having that <laughs> So I'm going off to the store. When you live in a country that's mostly cool for most of the time, you find it difficult to manage temperatures like this. Like for us, this is this is a heat wave. <laughs> it's a heat wave, guys. Okay, so <clears throat> It's just that time in the evening now where I start to feel like I'm fasting throughout the day I think today it was because of the heat I was just mostly hot so I was just so thirsty but at this point I'm also beginning to feel hunger so I ask Allah to accept it from me and forgive me my wrongdoings forgive all of us our wrongdoings and I hope you guys had a successful um, day of Arafah as well inshallah um, I was actually thinking this afternoon that subhanallah today reminded me of do you guys remember like a couple of years ago we had the really challenging ramadans <laughs> here in the uk where like maghrib was like almost 10 pm and fajr was like 3 am do you guys remember that oh my god i think it must have been like i don't know 2014 2015 i don't know it was them them really tough ramadans <laughs> subhanallah and it's interesting the way time changes and now ramadan is way past it's no longer in the heat of the summer for us anyway here in the uk so alhamdulillah and you know during those times we were always thinking how are we going to get through this ramadan i remember like it was all over the news people like these muslims are fasting they're going to be fasting like a 20 something hour fast how are they gonna do this is this going to be dangerous and we started it and we finished it like we always did <laughs> alhamdulillah you know fasting is the strength that you get from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you make the intention and you try yeah you're gonna struggle for a while until your body gets used to it but either way allah just helps you if you're sincere and you really want to do it he finds allah makes a way for you and he makes it easy for you at the end of the day so i'm so grateful for the much more easier ramadan that we, that we have these times compared to before but then again i'm like i'm really proud of us for sticking it through even the times where we had to fast 19 hours in a day it was tough but we're still here and it didn't kill us so fasting doesn't harm anyone well except if you have a medical condition that is so yeah i've chilled out now it's time for me to go and get started my phone's battery's about to die so since i'm going to be coaching on my phone i'm going to have to charge my phone whilst i coach <laughs>
So guys, I just finished coaching. This is my last session for the day. It is now 8.40. Um, my grub should be in less than an hour, so I'm going to go and prepare um, whatever. Actually, I feel like having some nice fruit flavoured water. I've been having lemon water every morning when I wake up but obviously because I was fasting today I didn't have that so I think I'll make some kind of fruit infusion water and then I'll go get ready to do my hair and have my little pamper session because tomorrow's Eid you know what guys normally I would like you guys saw in my Ramadan vlogs I would go and get my henna done and all of that this eat I'm just not feeling it I feel like it's it's just it's a vibe thing for me like some eats I just feel like going all the way out all the way out and other eats I'm just like I, I can't be bothered <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie this eat is just one of those I'm just like I'm excited that it's eat don't get me twisted but I'm not like overly overly excited so my excitement is kind of calm right now for eat so that's good yeah that's good you guys let me know in the comment section down below do you also get that where like some eats it's like you're doing the most and other eats you're just like can't be oxed <laughs> let me know i'm sure i'm not the only one that has this feeling but i'm taking a break now there's something that i gotta let you know it's been on my mind i wanna let it go it doesn't matter what kind of senses i got is it now or the future it doesn't matter you and i are the same maybe you better it's okay Look at me, look at me now, I'm your brother So never put me on a pedestal I don't want more when I respect you, respect me back Getting better, I'm not doing this cause I want a medal I'm in for the top, now I'm in the middle Yeah, yeah, I'm no la la With you by my side, never give up the fight You are my lord and you are my light now time to break with the fast i should break my fast with dates i have dates but i am so thirsty that i cannot i cannot wait to drink so i'm gonna have some of this right away bismillah oh oh that was good you know there is a hadith it reminds me of I'm not sure if I remember it correctly but it's something to do with the timing in which a believer is like happiest or something like that and I think one of those time is the time when or well, the fasting person yes I think is the time when the fasting person is the most happiest and one of those times is when they break their fast <laughs> oh, we do love a good old time to break our fast Bismillah. All right, time to go pray. So after breaking my fast, I decided to do my hair. And then I also decided to kind of do like a foot um, massage session. I picked up this set from TK Maxx. It comes in with the foot scraper and, you know, the clips and things like that. I My feet had been quite rough recently, so I wanted to take care of that. So I went ahead and did that. And then I decided to have a bubble bath because I hadn't had a pamper day in so long. So I picked up this bath salt from TK Maxx, as well as the bubble bath as well. It was quite nicely scented. Um, I think the scent was rose. So yeah, I enjoyed a nice bubble bath in preparation for eat. Um, I hadn't had a bubble bath day in so long, so this was really really needed i think i need to make it more of a habit to have more pamper sessions into my routine instead of just waiting for when i'm absolutely stressed out but yeah this was really lovely um time in the bath just soaking and relaxing
after that i decided to go a little bit over the top with my skincare in preparation for Eid I decided to do a mask and this is just a hydrating mask you guys know all about these you can pick them up pretty much anywhere super drugs any store where they sell beauty items you'll be able to find them they come in packs so yeah I did a little bit of that and I continued enjoying my fruit infused water and I washed some Islamic nasheeds in the meantime <laughs> Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala ansari Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala azwaji Sayyidina Muhammad Wala duriyati Sayyidina Muhammad Wa salim tasliman kafira Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah does is best so if you have that as a springboard in your life when the trial come you will be resilient because they're gonna come anyway and let nobody fool you to go to the other side that you're not gonna get trials you're not gonna get disease you're not gonna be ill you're not gonna be poor you're not gonna be tempted no it's part of Allah's Sunnah because when you say you are, he wants to prove. When a teacher teaches his class, he asks them, do you understand? They say, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. Then he brings a test or an examination. So that is what Allah does. But if you pass his exam, he exhorts you, Makam and Mahmuda, to a high standard. So therefore, when Sayyidina Ibrahim said he believed, Allah said, the trial is going to be according to your Iman. He had the only son. And Allah says, you need to give this son in sacrifice. And so Sayyidina Ibrahim consulted his wife, and his wife say, said, do as Allah has told you. He consulted his son, and he said, do my, da my dear dad as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you. But you will find me, this is the, the speech of the soul, you will find me amongst the patient people. Subhanallah. Ya Abatif al Matumar. Ya Abatif al Matumar. Satajiduni insha Allah min as Oh my dad, oh my dear dad, do as Allah has commanded you, because you will find me among the patients. فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ When both of them and their and his mom have submitted to the will of Allah and our Sayyidina Ibrahim has sharpened his knife and there's, a, and there's a saying that when he wanted to slaughter his son the first time he couldn't because he looked into his eyes and Ismail said to him, Daddy, if you look into my eyes, you're never going to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to do. So tie my eyes so you don't see my eyes and I don't see yours. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Falamna aslama, when both of them have actually decided and he has laid the sword and Allah knew that the knife was going to touch the throat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ransomed him with a ram. So therefore, we don't have to sacrifice our sons for any other being. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought animal sacrifice. So that we sacrifice it for who? For ourselves. It says the blood and the meat will never reach it. What reaches Allah is a taqwa. 
But then he said, when we sacrifice those qurbani, we need to eat of it and then feed the poor. This is the deen. And the animal that has been sacrificed in Mina today, eh, sorry, yes, in Mina today, tomorrow, the day after, and the day after, they collect them, all of them, and they put them in these massive cold rooms. There's a massive project sponsored by the Islamic Development Bank. And after Hajj, they ship those carcasses all over the world to poor people. So Islam, that's the beauty of the day. We don't waste. So today, that's the first thing we do. You do your qurbani. If you do your qurbani here, you can eat of your qurbani is sunnah. Secondly, Allah says, Kulu washrab wala to sirifu, eat and drink, but do not exceed the limit. So what was haram yesterday, is not halal today because of the Eid. It's still haram. Thirdly, we are not Eid worshippers. The worship does not end today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Worship your Lord until death do you come, until you die. So we don't stop. So we don't stop by Idul Ramadan, we don't stop by Idul Adha. And finally, we need to connect to our families. Call them back home, wish them Eid Mubarak, and pray for them. This afternoon, so I'm gonna make the most of this and make some dua because I surely need a lot of dua content. So guys, last night when I was going to bed, I decided to read um, the Quran a little bit before I slept and I was reading Surah as Safa. kind of a nerd when it comes to <laughs> anything to do with the atmosphere and like the, the, the different planets and things. I love things like that. Like I did um, chemistry for one of my A-levels and my favourite um, topic that we learned about was the topic that was called atmosphere and I just love anything to do with space. So anyways, I was reading Surah as Safa where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Indeed your God is one, Lord of the heavens and the earth, and that between them and laws of the sunrise. Indeed we have adorned the nearest heavens with an adornment of stars, and as protection against every rebellious devil. They may not listen to the so they may not listen to the exalted assembly of angels and are pelted from every side repelled and for them is a constant punishment except who snatches some words by theft but they are pursued by a burning flame piercing in brightness so for my fellow like scientific nerds out there um that reminded me of meteoroids so i started thinking wow i know meteoroids are, are stones but some of them do come down on earth with like really bright light on them as well so i was like wow what if like meteoroids are is like part of you know this thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down to attack the devils who are trying to steal from what the angels are speaking of this is basically to do with the fact that um you guys know that we're not supposed to believe in people who um guess what's going to happen in the future so all this fortune telling individuals right and there is a hadith by, by Aisha radiallahu anha the wife of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when she was asking the prophet she said you know sometimes these people are right you know what if what do we do when they're actually right and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever goes to a fortune teller or whoever believes in what the fortune teller tells him then they have disbelieved in everything that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has brought so basically this 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 does go to show that sometimes they are able to steal a couple of things from the discussions of the angels um and that is when they are pelted and allah literally throws things at them to 
prevent them from reaching the heavens and being able to steal from what the angels are saying. So this is what this verse was to is talking about. In any case, this reminded me about like um, meteoroids and stuff. So I was like, let me go online and watch a documentary <laughs> about the atmosphere. And that's what I was doing. I was watching documentaries about the atmosphere until I fell asleep. And then I woke up, it was like, I think it was time for fudger. And um, some videos were still playing. I was like, oh my God, I guess it was kind of like on rotation. But I personally love anything to do with science because for me, it just confirms my faith in Allah. Um, I think for some people, if their faith is slightly weaker, um, it makes them start questioning things. So if it makes you question a lot and all of that, just don't go there. But for me, I love anything to do with space. I feel like I pray to Allah that out of his mercy, he lets me enter Jannah. Like if I enter Jannah, I want to have a meeting with Allah and I want to ask him like, so what other creations did you create apart from us and the jinns? Like, are there other creations living in other planets? I want to know stuff like that. So what do you guys want to know when you have your meeting with Allah? Is there any other crazy people out there who want to have a meeting with Allah and want to know certain things about this world or about this planet or other planets in general? Um, please let me know in the comment section down below. Don't, don't let me be the only weirdo that, <laughs> that thinks about these things. I was literally like, oh, you know, I really can't wait. Like when I meet Allah, that's one, one thing I want to ask him, like, what other creations do you, do you have for law? Like, you know, I mean, we could be the only ones, but we might not be. I mean, we know the genes exist, so, you know, that's on this earth, but I'm talking about like other planets. Are there other creatures on other planets? Super fascinated. But anyway, that's my, that's my little fun fact for the day. Let's move on. Hey guys, so today is Saturday and I just returned back from the stores. I bought a couple of food bits and stuff because I'm going to cook. Remember guys, I told you that I'm having this little get together for my friend who's getting married soon, inshallah. So yeah, I bought some food stuff and I'm gonna go and cook in a minute. Um, yeah, I like to prepare whenever I'm having like a get together. Um, I like to prepare most of my meals the day before so that I'm not panicking and rushing the day of. So that's just what I'm going to get done now. Um, so as I said to you guys before, it's my friend, so it's my friend's Kothar's wedding soon, inshallah. By the time this video goes out, it would have already have happened because I know Kothar watches my videos <laughs> and I wouldn't want to ruin the surprise. So this video might be slightly delayed, but never mind. Um, yes. Also, on top of that, I bought some balloons. I'm going to try and do like a balloon arch. This is going to be my first time trying trying it. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so that will be fun. I'm also going to share some other like fun bits that we're going to do with you guys in case you guys are having any kind of get together and you're thinking of like ideas of things to do. On top of that, I'm going to set the table. I'm going to make it quite nice and fancy. Um... Yeah, we're gonna have some good food to eat. Oh, my friend Mariam, so in case, I'm sure I would have, I will explain to Kothar <laughs> before she watches this video, but in case I forget to, Kothar, Mariam is the one that got the cake and she got it from such a nice place and I can't wait um, to see what the cake looks like. So excited about that. And one of my other sisters is going to bring the, what is known as halal champagne. It's not champagne, guys. Calm down. <laughs> See some of you panicking. It's actually not champagne. Um, apparently, it's just like grape juice, you know, regular grape juice and red grape juice in a bottle. It's made to look fancy, but it's non-alcoholic. So um, she's going to bring that just to make it more like celebratory, if you like. Um, don't ask me where it's from because I don't know. I've never bought any of that kind of stuff before. So I guess I'll find out when it gets here. Um, I'll check the label and everything just to make sure it, it really is just juice. Um, so yeah, anyways, I'm gonna go and start getting the food and all of that cooked and ready now. So yeah, let's go. So I started off by making some meat kebab. Um, to make that, I'm using onion, mixed bell peppers and some gizzard as well. What do you call me, Ramsay? Yeah, yeah, my lord. 
Show me the way I don't want to settle for less But my flesh pulling me backwards Every time I meet some effort To sink ya, yeah, yeah Robbie, I know When I'm going far from you, I feel it, I know And I don't want to get lost in the I do I'm gone, cause I believe you love me Yeah, yeah, getting better I'm not doing this cause I want a better I'm bending for the top, now I'm in the middle Saying just to you, Allah, I'm done a With you by my side, though I will never give up the fight, though Ooh, 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 ooh I'm a lighter When it's so dark in this spots, in this spots, oh I'm catching my breath now Taking a break now. There's something that I gotta let you know. Let you know. It's been on my mind, I wanna let it go. Let it go. It doesn't matter what kind of senses I got. Is it now or the future? It doesn't matter. You and I are the same. Maybe you better, it's okay. Look at me, look at me now. I'm your brother. So never put me on the pedestal. I don't want more when I respect you. Respect me back. Getting better. I'm not doing this cause I want a medal. I'm aiming for the top, now I'm in the middle. Yeah, yeah. I'm done a lot With you by my side, never give up the fight You are my Lord and you are my light You are my light oh. I'm catching my breath now oh. I'm taking a break now Before I serve this, I'm going to make a tomato stew that I'm going to cover the gizzard all up in. It just makes it extra tasty. So yeah, in the meantime, I'll put that aside and move on making my fried rice. This is Nigerian fried rice. And in order to make that, I'm going to need some green onions and green beans. These are the long green beans. I just chopped them into smaller um, parts. And then if you're vegetarian, look away now, okay? I'm going to add some liver. Liver is actually really good for if you have low iron. So yeah, liver, some skinless, boneless chicken. And I'm also going to use some peas and sweet corn. To season, I'm gonna use some curry, um, some cubed seasoning, as well as a little bit of salt if I need to. I'm usually quite careful with the salt, to be honest. So yeah, these are all my ingredients. Put them together and make my Nigerian fried rice. So now that I have my veggies as well as my rice ready at this point, all I'm doing is just mixing the two together, giving it some time to kind of marinate um, and cook for a little bit longer once the rice is all nice and soft. Yeah, my Nigerian fried rice is ready. And then I literally spent the rest of the night um, blowing up balloons, but I didn't film that because I was so hot and I did not want to be in hijab. <laughs> so I blew up some balloons and adjusted it and fixed it onto the wall. And so the next day, this is what the living room space looks like for my brighter bee. Kind of proud of myself, guys. <laughs> not gonna lie.
Um, and then the cake arrived. OMG, this took me a lot of restraining to keep myself away from these cupcakes because they looked and tasted so good. If you guys are interested, The Merciful Servant has like this no music playlist and it literally has so many machines on there. So that's what I'm gonna play. It goes on for so long. So yeah. <laughs> So this is going to be our healthier dessert. It's going to be oranges that I'm going to garnish with honey. And then I'm going to add some um, chopped up mint to it. So mix that all up and nice and easy. So the bride is finally here, well bride to be, <laughs> she wasn't married at this point yet, so yeah, they took a long time to get here because Kothar, this is the bride, um, she was taking her time all up in Zumba, enjoying herself and we're like, where are you girl, because she thought it was just a regular meet up at my place and she's like, oh I was just at Zumba, you know, having a good time. <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah, I just had to let her know that Basira was also involved in getting things ready and everything. And then she was like, Mariam is a secret killer. <laughs> she wasn't being serious, obviously, because she was like, oh my God, because Mariam brought her over and didn't even tell her anything about what was happening. So that's why she was like, this girl can keep secrets. <laughs> so alhamdulillah. Um, those were good times. And then I came in and Kothar was just like, girl, what else did you decorate in this place? <laughs> she, she does pay close attention to detail to me and my home decor stuff. And every time Kothar comes over, she's like, Nafisa, you changed something again, didn't you? <laughs> so she was like, you painted that wall, didn't you? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so she's like, oh, Nafisa, the interior decorator. And I'm like, yep, it's all in my head. <laughs> so I had to put her Bryce to be banner on her. Alhamdulillah, we actually turned up after this, but you know, the hijabs had to go because it was a really, really hot day um, in July during this day. So she was just like, okay, if you're not filming anymore, the hijab is coming off. So I was like, okay, yeah, girl, you do, do your thing. And that guys was it we enjoyed our day like we turned up like all the way up <laughs> alhamdulillah i'm glad the girls enjoyed it thank you guys so much for watching the video assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh see you in my next vlog